Meu nome, em nome da Global Coach, ah, eu agradeço a presença do Ed Van aqui na né, Esquinote. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yara. I would like to start out by thanking Vinicius and Yara for inviting me here to this first ever Global Code Developers Conference. You guys are in the right place. Are you having a good time so far? Yeah? Okay, we're just getting started. So there's a lot more good content to come today and tomorrow. Today, I'm going to talk about my opinions. This is the fun thing with a keynote. I can just give my own opinions. Um, don't have to stay with the technical so much on browserism versus desktopism. How did we get here and where do we go? So this talk is about going from the past to the future. You see this bridge here from web 1.0 to web 2.0. And we're all walking along this bridge kind of nice and hopefully it doesn't fall down. But <laughs> <clears throat> The past, present, and future of the user interface for network aware applications. Um, I think people who develop software always like to um, name things appropriately. Naming is very important with, with object-oriented programming especially because you're modeling the real world in the software world. And choosing names rigorously and carefully is very important. So I'm not saying rich internet application. I'm not saying uh, RIA or Flash or anything with buzzword there. I'm trying to be the most general kind of thing. In my opinion, any application that opens up a TCP socket to another computer is a network-aware application. And we have to get out of this mindset of thinking that everything is in the browser. And that's what we'll talk about today. So, you need a user interface. Well, you're going to need to know uh, the answers to a few questions before you can build that user interface. Just a few questions, not too much. So is, uh, let me go back. Yeah. Uh, where are the users? Um, where, where are they sitting? What kind of device are they sitting in front of? Uh, are they in front of a desktop PC? Are they using a web browser? Um, are they on a telephone? Are they on a cell phone or a PDA of some kind? Are they using virtual reality goggles to view their application? Are they sitting in front of a command line using something like Gopher or Curses or any of the other great old text user interface technologies? Um, if you're using a desktop application, what kind of operating system do you have? You know, what do the users have already? Are they willing to install something new? Um, if you're going to be on the desktop, which UI toolkit? Are you going to be using something like you know Java, Swing, Win32, Motif? EX window toolkit, all sorts of different kinds of things there. If you're choosing a web browser, um, which web browser? You know, there are quite a few. It's not just Internet Explorer. Now more than ever, you have Safari, you have Opera, you have Firefox. There are, um, there's this other one called Flock. Anyone here heard of Flock? The Flock web browser. Kind of interesting thing. The um, some people left the Mozilla organization and created this Flock web browser with a, it's like a browser that's specifically targeted at social and web 2.0 applications. And they've been trying to get it off the ground and make it successful, but so far not yet. Maybe, maybe you can look for it. Inside the browser, do you need JavaScript or not? Uh, are you going to be using Ajax or not? Are you going to be using Flash or not? Um, inside the interactive voice response system, there's a couple options there too. On the mobile phone, are you using a WAP phone or are you using a mobile browser with an iPhone or something more sophisticated like that? In virtual reality, are you targeting Second Life or are you targeting the uh, next platform? In the text-based command line, you know, as I mentioned, there's options there too. Or the worst case, you're asking to do all of the above. And as I talk, get to the end of the talk, it will be clear that in the future, this will be more common. This is what people are going to want. Uh, I'm on my cell phone, I'm checking my email, I get to my work, uh, the this, this session goes from my cell phone to the desktop, and you know, or then I go home in the evening, I'm watching my TV, I can check the mail too. Getting into that level of uh, 
presence migration will be important. But we're not done, still some more questions. How will you update the application? Are you using Java Web Start? Are you using Click Once? Uh, are you using some kind of installer program? Or is there no installation at all? If, you're, uh, if it's a network aware application, sometimes you cannot always be aware of the network. You get unplugged, you're in an area of low coverage. Um, how do you synchronize your state when the connection resumes? Uh, what database will you use for your local store while you are offline? Uh, when you're on a network application, where does the business logic execute? You look at uh, Google Web Toolkit, GWT. Some of that enables putting the business logic in the browser if you want. Or you can put it on the server and make a decision there. Where does the user interface logic execute? That is, what page am I on? Is my tree view expanded or collapsed? Uh, which checkbox are checked and that sort of thing? What locale am I using? Um, anyhow, lots and lots of questions that you need to answer specific to user interface. Now, let me just do a quick check here. Am I going too fast with the speaking? No? Okay, good, good. Uh, the summary of all of that is that building a user interface for a distributed application requires making many complex choices. And unfortunately, those choices, once you make them, they're sometimes difficult to reverse. You can go down a path, and once you get there, you realize, oh my goodness, well, maybe I shouldn't have chosen to just use a web browser. Maybe I really need to do something a little more rich. Um, it might not be possible to make that. So you have to make these choices carefully. 